Mason. I know glass and stone isn't to everyone's liking. Well, then, let them live where I've had you for the past two years. I somehow got very tired of the, the old and the ornate. You like it, huh? Do I like it? Yes. I love it. It's beautiful. That's the way I felt about it, too. I wanted to make sure it had a certain feeling of openness and still didn't violate your privacy. You can see the Channel Islands. Yes, I can. Many of the times I'd remember the beauty of Santa Barbara, convinced that I'd never live to see it all again. If you really like the view, it's yours. I want to buy this house for you, Mother. Mason. Look, I've still got some money left. I'll help you no, with no, the dam. No, no, no. I was deprived of the chance to help you before. I'm lucky to have a second opportunity. But when you said you'd buy me a home, I... I had no idea it'd be anything like this. Why? It's enormous, and it's so beautiful. You deserve it. You've been through hell the past few years. I want you to know that's not going to happen again, because I'm going to be close by. This is going to be your home now. And nobody's going to take it away from you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mason's not here. He left. I don't know if he's going to be back. Well, he was expecting me, so, mm. uh, listen, why don't you give him that for me? Do yeah, sure, sure. Thanks. Um, Something else? Yeah, can, can I talk to you for a minute? Um, mm, sure. Thanks. Thanks. Victoria, you and I have been through a lot together, so um, I don't... It's all right for me to be straightforward, isn't it? Oh, yeah, certainly. You know, you and Mason have been working so hard together, I figured it was only a matter of time anyway. It's not about Mason. It's about you. What? Have you been using cocaine? I've got a load of this. It's unusual. No car or nothing. I wonder who it's, it's from. It's from my mother. What? Really? Yes, of course it is. Well, it's... More original than a toaster, but what, what's the significance behind it? Well, when I was a child, my mother always made certain that there was a globe in the house. So what I used to do is, before I went to sleep, I would close my eyes tight, give this thing a spin. And when it stopped, I'd point my finger to a place, and then my mother would tell me about that place. You know, she always somehow managed to make it sound like the most exotic place in the world. What kind of stories were they? Well, at the time, they all seemed different, but... As the years went by, I gradually began to realize that in every single story, there was always this uh, beautiful damsel in distress. And uh, this dashing, fearless young lad would always come along and rescue her, take her away. I wonder if Hamlet knew you were going to be that fearless, dashing young lad. Yeah. Well, I wonder if thinking about those stories is what got me through all of our little escapades. Why so sad? Hmm? I just can't help thinking about Cruz and Eden. You know, their love was always like a fairy tale to me. Only the hero didn't win. Thank you for, uh... Coming here so soon. I appreciate it. Well, when I got your message, I thought maybe you uh, heard something from Judge Larson or Mason. Nothing like that. Well, I'm, I'm glad you needed to see me. I mean, I was going to come later anyway, but that you called and you told me you needed to see me. Yeah, well, I, I wanted you to uh, do something for me, if you will. Oh, anything. I need you to help me put my affairs in order. Sorry to disappoint you. Oh, Dr. Clark. No, you, you, you didn't disappoint me at all. So what's the idea of sleeping in the middle of the day? Are you all right? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Except for the fact that I'm blind and bored. Are you telling me that the hospital singers and the hospital clowns and the hospital intellectual discussion group passed this room by 
Well, I'm just going to have to talk to our entertainment coordinator about this. Oh, I'm not so bored now that you're here to talk to me. Is that rose for me? Yes, it is. Do you like it? Oh, yes. It's, it's beautiful. What's the problem? I didn't hear what I just said. Perfectly. Well, I don't know if it's beautiful. I mean, I can't see it. Well, then why did you say it? I don't know. I guess I, I smelled it and I sort of thought I could see it. Of course you could. And yes, it is beautiful. You're pretty tricky, you know that? You did that on purpose, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. You brought me the rose. So I, I, I could appreciate things, even, even if I can't see them. Well, your words, not mine. I just don't want to be the first doctor in this hospital to lose a patient to terminal boredom. Well, I won't complain anymore. At least not if you keep coming to see me. Uh, wait. Thanks. Don't, don't go. I'll, I'll get rid of him. Uh, hello? Yes, th this is Gina Capwell. No, there's no mistake. I... How much is it? Um, yeah, I'll... I'll take care of it. Was that bad news? Um, it's just the administration office calling me. Uh, I want to know how I'm going to take care of my, my bill. It seems I owe the hospital a bundle. They should throw in singers and, and, and jugglers for what it costs. I'm going to talk to them. I hate when they bug my patients about money. No, they, they were just trying to find out about my insurance. The problem is my, my insurance is non-existent. You don't have any insurance? I, I never really thought about it. It seemed like such a negative approach. Well, the money side of it isn't my field, but the suits who run this place make sure they get every dime of it. Your medicine's big business around here. Now tell me about it. Look, I, I know this isn't going to be easy, but I hope that you can figure out some way to not let this bring you down. I'll, I'll handle it. Thinking about taking out a loan or something? No. No, actually, I... I, I think I, I know somebody that might be willing to pick up the bill. Somebody that owes me. <laughs> I'll tell you, old Jake's career has really taken off. Talk about a fluke, huh? Hey, don't be knocking my client like that. I mean, this guy's got his face on almost every billboard and every magazine. Well, that bit part in that movie? He is on the move. <laughs> well, you must be doing pretty well yourself. To you, Jay, considering you're taking 10% of whatever Jake makes. Well, not 10% of everything. I mean, I didn't hook up with him before he did that beast deal. And I know I could have made him more money on that thing. So what's next for the Incredible Hulk? Well, I have a tough time coming up with something, you know? I can't believe you actually have trouble coming up with an angle, TJ. Oh, uh, I don't think it'll take much. Just a little thought is all. Knock Why him up don't with you something. spend your time... Finding your own job, uh, instead of, like, leeching off of somebody else's. Ted, do you know how hard T.J. worked to get Jake this part in the movie? I mean, it's not easy planning someone else's career. <clears throat> Excuse me, I, um, I think this would be a good time if I took a look at the garden. It's all right if I, um, go sit by the pool, isn't it, Ted? Sure, it's fine with me. Go any way you want to do your heavy thinking. Don't you think you were just a bit rough on T.J.? I'm going to drive him away. Take a bulldozer to do that. You know, I don't understand this. This is not like you. The reason I love you so much is because you care about people and how they feel. Of course I care about people, but there is a limit. T.J. passed his about three days ago. And the guy actually thinks we're his personal slaves. I don't think that's all that's you're right. I don't like the guy. I don't want him here, and I don't want you spending time with him. I want him out of here. You spent 16 hours a day with my husband, and then you waltz in out of, out of the blue, and you're accusing me of using cocaine. I just asked you, that's all. Oh, yes, that's an absolutely innocent question. I suppose you were just riding along in your car today, and you went, gee, I wonder, is Tori using cocaine? 
it's not how it was at all. You see, Mel Stock uh, offered me cocaine the other night. Really? Did you take it? No. Oh, yeah, of course. You would say no, but I would automatically say yes, or you would assume I would take anything that he offered. You've been acting strange, all right. You've been bouncing off the walls, and <laughs> you're under a lot of pressure, perhaps. Julia, I... Julia, listen to me. I am not using cocaine. I'm not using any other drug. And if I have been off the wall and a little crazy lately, it's simply because you and my husband have been spending far too much time together. Oh, I'm sorry. I really, I, if I'm out of line... Oh, sorry. But, you know, you are out of line. You really are. You were probably hoping that I was going to tell you that I was really addicted to this drug and you can go tell Mason and then you could get that all off your conscience. I don't know. How am I ever going to convince you that there's nothing going on between Don't, don't and... say anything, okay? Please just leave and go home and think of another reason to justify trying to destroy my marriage, all right? And go! the way you were yesterday, making everything sound so final. Yes, well, you know how I feel. Yeah, and I'm not going to accept it. Look, I didn't ask you here to argue with you, so... And for what it's worth, I'll understand if you don't want to do this. What do you want me to do? First off, I'd like you to put the beach house in your own name. I bought that place for you, and I'd always intended for you to have it. Well, I was planning on staying there and taking care of it until you came back anyway. I'd also like you to look into the possibility of taking over the detective agency. I think you could run it very well if you just put your mind... I'm not a detective. The place can't run without you. It's just going to have to do what it's when, doing uh, now until Pearl you come back. When Pearl comes back from being out of town, you should call and see if he and Kane will help you out. I think the three of you could handle it just fine. What about Carmen? Well, I think the best thing would probably be to send her home. She loves it here. Even she can't handle it here on her own. Well, she doesn't have to. She's your sister. She's like family to me. She'll, she'll be with me. I can't ask you to do you that. You didn't. Well, thank you. I... It's a load off my mind knowing that she has you to turn to. Yeah, well, she does. Whenever I look at Carmen, I see you. What? What? Well, I don't want to play this game. I, what, is, what, what game are we playing here? I'm just trying to face the facts. Face Excuse the facts. Me. Face the facts that you're innocent. Face the fact that Mason and Julia are filing an appeal, that there is a witness out there that can clear your name. I'm going to be in, in a prison cell for the next 25 years. If you think that we can gain something by trying to pretend that that's not going to happen, you're wrong. Because I'm going to be in a cell just like this. And you're going to be passing your days outside. What is that? What's going on with you? You're afraid I'm not going to wait for you? Well, that concludes the diagnostic portion of our entertainment. Well, how, how am I doing? You're very confident. You can tell that by taking my blood pressure. Well, the news about your hospital bill didn't raise it one bit. You must be confident. Well, if my blood pressure went up every time I got into a bind, I'd be in a cemetery by now. Things have been that rough, huh? Why? I, I shouldn't complain. I sure wish my sight came back, though. Well, I think I told you. I get the feeling you'll land on your feet no matter what. Well, I'm not as desperate as I was the other day. I mean, I, I knew that rose was beautiful. I know that I can enjoy things. I can tell a lot about things without actually seeing them. Like what? Well... For instance, you can tell a lot about a person without actually seeing their face. Me, for instance? Well, sure. Okay, great. Let's hear it. What am I like? Well, you're young, attractive, and you've got a sexy voice. Oh, let's see now. You're wearing Italian... Leather shoes, loafers, loafers, and no socks. And you've got on a pair of cotton trousers and a button down the front shirt, open at the collar. That's amazing. Am I right? You are almost perfect. <laughs> That's 
Doctor, can I visit my favorite aunt? Sure, come on in. Hi. Haley? Yes, me. Oh, Jake's with me today. Hi, Jake. How you doing? We brought you a surprise. Oh, good. Don't tell me. Okay. Licorice, my favorite. Oh, you have to share now. Uh, you look great, Gina. Oh, thanks. Maverick? Is that you? <laughs> Boomer? Yeah. <laughs> hey. Who's Boomer? It's an old nickname. I don't believe it. That is good. Either. Hey, what do you do? What is this? Doctor? Yeah, that's what, that's what they tell me. Hey, how do you guys know each other? Boomer and I went to high school together. Yeah, we played on the football team. The only winless yeah. season in the school's history. Whoa. Yeah, well, we would have scored like one touchdown against Oxnard if you hadn't missed that pass uh, right through his eyes. It's been a long time. Why remind me, okay? <laughs> so what have you been up to? Uh, not much, you know. Oh, no, he's only the biggest model in Santa Barbara, about to become a movie star. Oh, yeah. You went into show business? <laughs> I don't believe this. Do you know how shy this guy was in high school? Tell me. I tried to set him up on a date. Do you remember Barbara Naylor, huh? Uh, look, nobody wants to hear that. Bob, I do. I do. I want to hear all, all about Boomer. I want to hear everything no. Jake can tell me. Uh, well, really, then you'll be uh -oh. for a long afternoon. Man, I know a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, look who's here. Lovely Nurse Simmons to take you down to your test, Gina. Uh -oh. yeah, can, can I take the test later? I mean, I want to hear what Jake has to say about you. No, no, no. You can talk to Jake after you've had your test and after I've censored his memory. Uh, no, no, don't do that. Don't okay, you okay, listen no. to him, Jake. Okay. okay. Okay, where, where am I, where am I going? You're going to radiology. Remember mm -hmm. I told you about these tests earlier? Well, aren't you going to go with me? Yeah, I'll be down there in a few minutes. I, I'll, I just, they have to prep you up for the test first. All right. Okay, okay uh, thanks for coming to see me, Haley. Thanks for the licorice. Uh, we'll see you later, okay? Boomer. <laughs> 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 She's going to get her eyesight back. Well, at this point, it's a little too early to tell. I mean, it could go either way. But she's in very good health otherwise. Well, see, I don't know how she's going to deal with it if she has to be blind for the rest of her life. Well, I wouldn't worry about it too much, Haley. Your aunt seems like a real survivor. I mean, I haven't seen many patients with as much spirit and drive as she has. I think she's going to do just fine. I'm glad you're here, TJ. I'm going to talk to you. You know, I got a strange feeling I know what you're going to say to me. Okay, well, then I made reservations for you at the Seatide Motel. That's one way of letting a guy know he's overstayed his welcome, right? It's just that Ted and I just moved in here and we really haven't had a chance to get together And I also don't alone. think it's one of the greatest ideas in the world for one of Lagan's old boyfriends you to guys spend don't time with us. You guys don't owe me any explanations, okay? I know. And I know I haven't really shown you, but I do really appreciate all the stuff you've done for me. Especially you, Ted. I know you put up with a lot, man. I did. I might shake your hands, but it doesn't gonna work, you know? So, uh... Thank you, Lagan. Thank you. You take care of her, all right? She's the best there is. Tell me you have faith in me. That you know that I'm going to wait for you. Darling. Don't you understand? That is exactly what I'm afraid of. I don't want you to wait for me. Don't say that. We're not talking about a couple of months here. We're not even talking about a couple of years. I don't care. Well, I do. And I'm not going to come to some visiting room every other week and watch you get older and older, pretending it's all right, and knowing all the time that you're wasting your life waiting for me. I don't have a life without you. Well, God, you should, you know, you should have a home. You should have everything that you deserve, Eden. I'm not going to listen to this anymore. Listen, please listen. I want you to have a family. You're the kind of person who should have kids, and you can't do that with me. Please don't stop it. Ask me to spend the time in here knowing that I ruined your life. It would make it worse. We are going to be together. We are going to live our dream. I guess you better leave. I'll take care of everything you want me to take care of, and then I'll be back. Nothing is going to keep me away from you. Guard?
Hello, Pamela. You said you were blind. I am. Your perfume, the lilacs, give you away. Why exactly did you demand I come here? I didn't demand anything. I, I just asked you to stop by. There was a distinct implied threat in your tone. I just wanted to have a little chat. I mean, we haven't talked since you made your sensation in court that day. I don't think we have anything to chat about. If there's no purpose in my being here, I'm going to leave. No, wait a minute. All right. Look, I run a quite a hospital bill here. I thought maybe you could help me. I'm a little short on cash. Oh, really? What happened to the $50,000 I gave you? That was three weeks ago. I mean, I have living expenses. Do you seriously imagine that I want to give you any more money? Why would you imagine that? Oh, I see. You, th you thought I'd feel sorry for you because you're blind. No, oh, I never thought pity was your long suit. I... I just thought maybe you'd have a little more gratitude for all the things I've done for you. What should I be grateful for? The blackmail or the threats? Oh, come on, Pamela. If it weren't for me, you'd still be wearing a veil. I mean, I'm the one that got you the medication for your face. Yes, well, I think $50,000 more than covered that debt. And I'm the one that, that kept you here in Santa Barbara. I talked you into staying here so you could meet your beloved sons. Now, now that should be worth something. Nothing is as important to me as my two sons. I knew that. That's why I forced you to stay here. No, you did not. You wanted me to stay here to get money out of C.C. Your motive was clear and concise. Greed, Gina, greed. Whatever it was, I'm the one that made you stay here. It was because of me you stayed. All right, for that I thank you. I'm going to be very happy living here again. Mason's bought me such a, oh, it's such a wonderful house. It's got, it's right near Montecito, and it's got spectacular views, and the guest quarters, oh, it's so beautiful. Well, I, I, I'm very happy you have such a wonderful house. I mean, isn't that another reason you should be thanking me? I mean, if it weren't for me, you wouldn't have that house. You wouldn't have anything. Now, now that is, that's cause for you to, to spring from my hospital bill. I think not. All right. Fine. Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll skip the money someplace else. You know, I've given you a golden opportunity here, and you passed it up. You've blown it. You know, I helped you before, Pamela, and I, I could help you again. But if you're going to be so foolish just enough... Pamela... Pamela! Yeah. Yeah, Michael. No, the house perfect. No, no. No, there's no need for all that. Right. I'm assuming since it's unoccupied, I can uh, get a quick escrow on this? Good. Good. No, no. No, I'm going to pay... I'll just pay cash. Yeah, I can get a deposit over to you right away. Right. Bye. I don't believe it. You bought a house? Yeah. You did? Yeah, have you seen the, uh, the checkbook? Uh, yeah, it's right here. Well, isn't you are so unpredictable. When did, when did you decide you were going to do this? Uh, a few days ago. Oh, well, uh, where is it? It's near Montecito. It's a beautiful spot. Is it Spanish style? Or? No, no, it's very contemporary. It's got one of the best views in Santa Barbara. This is, this is unbelievable. You are really, you're sweet. You're great. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. I think Mother's going to be very happy there. After all she's been through, the least I can do is make sure she has a house of her own. Listen, I've got to get over to the realtors with the deposit. He needs 50 grand right away. Uh, Thanks for being so understanding. Yeah. I'll see you later. Okay. 50 grand. 50 grand. 50 grand. Oh, my God. Mel. Yeah, Mel, listen, I'm really glad you're home. Listen, um, I need the money back. You have no idea. Yeah, I did get the stuff. I did, yeah, and I, and I used it. I used some of it, but this emergency has come up, and I need it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, well, can you give me a loan? Oh, you know, in advance on my salary, something like that. Yeah, um, yeah, I understand. Sure. You know, okay, okay, Mel. Thanks. Bye. Everyone says that once uh, Mason and Julia file for an appeal, you're going to be out of here. Oh, yeah, yeah. You bet. So, um, how do you feel about getting married? I love him so much, Cruz. Yeah, well, he loves you, too. I really think you're going to be way happy. I do, too. Um... 
It's real hard for me to get excited about this wedding, knowing that you're not going to be there with Eden, though, you know? Well, actually, Kill, that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you. You know, I was, I was hoping to, uh, maybe you could involve her a little more completely in the planning or something. Just something to keep her mind off of us being separated right now. That's impossible, Chris. Yeah, well, give it a shot, will you? Mm-hmm. You know, I, uh, don't want you thinking about me while this is going on in your life. I mean, I'd really appreciate it if you just stick to the business at hand because I'm going to be there. In a way. I mean, you look at her and I'm going to be there in spirit, at least. I, I've already had a lot of uh, visions about it, to the truth. I've seen you and you're going to look really beautiful. In your gown, he's going to be way proud of you. I thought from the beginning that you... You make a, a real good couple, and I think you're going to have a great life together. The one you and Eden should have, too. Thank you. Thank you for coming over on such short notice. I really appreciate it. It's really all right, Victoria. You sounded so serious. Why were you so distraught on the telephone? Yeah, yeah, I get like that. It's really stupid. I magnify all these problems. I think it's the end of the world, and I sit down and I think about it, and it's not a big deal, and I'm fine. All right, how can I help you? Oh, I did this. I did this really stupid thing. I got myself in a bind. Um, you know, with Mason at the trial and not home, I was starting to feel a little bit neglected and depressed and everything. So I went out, and I bought myself this lovely fur jacket, and I gave him a check. But I didn't tell Mason about it, and then I realized that I shouldn't have done it, and... I couldn't return it because, you know, it was on sale and everything. And now you need some money to cover the check before Mason finds out about it? Oh, you know, and I'm so embarrassed. You know, this is not the way I wanted to start a relationship with my new mother-in-law. How much do you need? Five thousand dollars. All right, Victoria. I'll have the money to you within the hour. Oh, oh, listen, I really, I really appreciate it. And I promise you I will pay you back the minute I get paid for my movie. Okay? No, no, I wouldn't hear of it. You're my first daughter-in-law. You give me a grandson. I want you to consider this as a little gift for me to you. Oh, thank you. No, I don't know how to thank you. Normally, you know, I don't worry about things like this. But Mason, we've been a little, you know, tense with each other lately. And he's just, you know, been under a lot of pressure. I understand perfectly. And please don't be concerned. We'll keep this as a little secret between us. Okay. You planning a night on the town? I'm having problems dialing the phone. I keep getting people that speak Spanish. I can't dial the numbers right. It's really pretty simple. Now you have 12 buttons, numbered left to right in rows of four, right? Now, except for the bottom row, which is a zero in the center. Okay. Okay, you got that? Yeah. Now, after a while, you're going to be able to tell the difference between the tones. Here, try this. Dial 555. Five, five, five. Wait a minute, wait. 555. Five. No, no. Oh. Try this. Five five five, five 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 eight zero three seven. Is that right? No, that's right. Eight zero three seven. Right. It's ringing. Oh no 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 no! Wait 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 till they pick up. Hello, Doctor Scott Clark's line. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Any urgent messages for me? Nothing urgent, Doctor. Okay, thanks a lot. Mr. Popularity, huh? <laughs> I could call that number and get you any time? Day or night. Well, would you write it down for me? Sure, I could do that, but uh, you can have anybody there to read it to you? I don't know. I, I guess I should memorize it. What's the number again? It's 555-8037. 555 five, 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 eight, zero, three, seven. I'll remember it. Good. All right, I got to get back to my rounds. Oh, yeah, I talked to admitting and asked them not to hassle you anymore about your bill. They promised to wait until you got out of here. I'm, I'm still working on it. Okay, good. I'll see you later. Five, five, five. You got it. Hey, Doc, got to get this stuff off me, man. Oh, when I tried to get it off you the other day, you wanted it left on. Yeah, I know, What's I know. What's the deal, TJ? I, um, I kind of revised my condition. 
Besides, when I woke up this morning, man, there was no pain at all. I'm telling you. I mean, your healing powers are amazing, yeah, doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, I don't need the snow job, TJ. I know I'm a good doctor, and I know that you are a good liar. <laughs> Come on, let's get those casts off. This is it. I toyed with the, the gazebo or down by the tennis courts, but this has always been my favorite spot. Oh, are you kidding? This is going to be perfect. Ah! Do you remember when Daddy caught you up here reading uh, Lady Shadowy's Lover? <laughs> what were you, 14 or 15 years old? More like 12. Oh, what an introduction that was. Yeah, uh, Dad. We used to hide up here all the time. Oh, always. Well, this is, uh, Daddy never looked up here. No. So great. Well, there's lots of nooks and crannies, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. We used to play some killer hide-and-seek games, oh, let me God. tell you. We'd be at it for hours, you remember? Oh, it's the, the flashlight. Flashlight, flashlight pad, like, yes. <laughs> Whenever you want to get caught, you came up here. Oh, you could hide in the bushes for hours. <laughs> we used to think you and Johnny Lindstrom were up here making out, and I never asked you about that, you. Oh, come on, Johnny Lindstrom. Believe me, if I was up here, it was to get away from you. <laughs> really? A hiding place. Exactly what we call it. Mm-hmm. Our Anne Frank days. <laughs> Let me show you where we have the minister. Okay. This is it. I'd like for you to come up with the color schemes and fabrics as soon as possible. It's a beautiful home, Mr. Capwell. It's going to be a pleasure working on it. Jeffrey, I'll be right with you. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Um, I'll have some preliminary sketches ready at the beginning of the week. That'd be wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Okay. You have my number. Feel free to call. Uh, Mason, what's going on here? I'm doing my best to get Mother's house ready as soon as possible. Uh, without any regard for my opinion, I see. <laughs> I didn't know you'd want to be included in the decisions on carpets. And no, no, that's... that's you, you know what I mean. Uh, the buying of this house, it should have been a decision that we all reached, surely. Well, do you really think Mother would have been happier in her hotel room than here? Wait, wait, that, that's, that's not the point. The point is that, that you just... You didn't even bother to let me in on this, you know? Well, frankly... Jeffrey, I, I liked the house. I knew it was perfect. I didn't want to waste any time. Oh, I see. Uh, what, my, my opinion is merely a waste of time. Is that it? If you want me to be perfectly honest, I knew that you weren't in a position to contribute financially right now, Jeffrey. I didn't want you to feel pressured. Right, right. Of course. I, I should have known the Capwell money. It can handle everything, Jeffrey, right? Jeffrey, I don't know where this is coming from, but I hope you can get over it before the wedding. I'm doing what I think is best for Mother. I'd like to finally give her the sort of life she deserves. And I lie here thinking about all the things I'm going to have to adjust to once I get home. And I only think about the big things. I forget about all the little things. I mean, how does a blind person put on makeup or, or, or find the right clothes to match? Or figure out how much money they have. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you don't need any makeup. But I can show you how they figure out their money. Here. I mean, the, the coins, I think I can understand. But the bills all feel the same. Okay, well, look. Now, this is a one, okay? Uh-huh. Because it's in your wallet the way that you usually carry your bills. Right. Right. Now, what you do with a five, you could do this. All right? Uh-huh. And with a ten... You could fold it like this. All right. Now a 20, you'd fold twice, lengthwise. Yes. Right. And a 50, you fold twice, widthwise. I get it. All right. You got it? Yeah. You try it. Okay. This is the way you normally have a bill. This means it's a $1 bill. Right. Now, if it's a 5, you fold it like this. Yeah. And if it's a 10, you fold it like this. Mm -hmm. A 20, like this. And a 50, like this. I've never met anybody that picked it up so quickly. Well, when it comes to money, I, I learn pretty fast. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that is my dollar. Sorry. Where's the habit? Ah, uh, sure. 
What about, like, hundreds and, and thousand dollar bills? <sighs> I don't think there's that many thousand dollar bills around anymore. Well, there are. I've seen them. I mean, I intend to see a whole lot more in my life. I can't believe how much spirit you've got. You're pretty incredible, you know that? You look great. Well, I don't know. I feel pretty weird in a tux, but it's a lot better than that loincloth. No. Hey, don't we talk about loincloth? I mean, it's put you in a position to make a whole lot of money there, partner. Something about this picture just keeps nagging me, though, you know? What? I don't see anything wrong with it. Oh, no, I think he looks great. It's just him with a tuxedo on and that, you know, classy nightclub. He just looks right at home. Look, I never felt right at home in any club. Wait, 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 wait. And this is just what I've been looking for. You could open up a classy nightclub, bud. DJ, I don't know anything about running a club. No, man, I'll handle all that. I mean, you're the face. We use you as the draw. And with you, we get a high visibility crowd. And uh, we get, like, what, a big dance floor? Live music? I'm telling you, we could call it, um, uh, the Beast Lair. Now that stinks. All right, <laughs> well, uh, we'll come up with something. But look, we'll put thousands of your pictures plastered up all over the place. We'll make a fortune. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where do you get money to put something up like that? Uh, no, no, we don't worry about that. We'll come up with something. We'll figure that out. Is that <laughs> I just got a call from the bank informing me that there were insufficient funds to cover the check I just wrote. It seems you wrote a check for $5,000 without telling me and without entering it in the ledger. Yes, I did. Uh, here's the money, Mason. Well, the money's not the issue, Victoria. I could have transferred funds to cover it if you'd only told me. Look, I'm really sorry, okay? And, and I'm, I'm very embarrassed about this whole thing, but I was, I was depressed and, and, I, and I bought this jacket and I, I realized that, that I shouldn't have done it and it didn't make me feel better. Was this your idea of punishing me? Watching me write a check that you knew was going to bounce? Mason, listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I embarrassed you. I was hoping that I could get this into the bank before your, your check went in, but the bank was closed. I'm sorry, really. Where did you get this much cash, anyway? Um, well, they, they paid me for my movie. In cash? No, no, they, they cashed my check for me. I'm sorry. I, I, really, I apologize. Well, I guess we've both been under a lot of strain lately. Listen, I've, um, I've got to go talk to Julia about Cruz's case, but we can have dinner later if you like. Oh, uh, no, we can't. Sorry. Well, why not? I'm, I'm shooting tonight. Yeah, I don't know what time I'm going to be home. Sorry. I see. You're still going to work on that film, knowing how I feel about it. I have to finish what I started. How do you expect us to work out our problems if everything else takes precedence? I've wondered the same thing. It's perfect. It's the perfect place. It's like it was designed for it. For what? What are you talking about? The right, the right location. The, the right walls. Escape routes. And this place is so big and so lush, nobody could possibly secure it all. Kane, you're not making sense. I mean, this is my father's estate, not an empty lot looking for a tract home. You sound like a whacked out developer. Believe me, I am not talking about building houses. Well, then what do you... No, you, you don't need to think about it. Look at it. It is the perfect place. For Cruz to escape? Right in the middle of the wedding. What, are you crazy? No, no, listen to me. Everyone's attentions will be diverted. And if they're not diverted, we'll give them a little surprise. And then Cruz is over that wall, and he has a clear line to the road. All we need is a car and a driver waiting. King, would you wait a second? How are we even going to get him to the wedding? Oh, well, that's your job. Once he's there, I'll take over. Even it can work. Believe me, I know it can. Oh, as you can see, it's considerably more... How shall I put this? Upscale in the places we used to live in, hmm? Yes, I'm putting a grand piano over there. Oh, I've missed hearing you play so much, Geoffrey. He's incredibly talented, you know. Yes, I know he is. I've heard him play. When I was a kid, we used to have music in the house all the time. And dancing. Oh, dancing. Do you remember? <laughs> I taught him to dance when he was only 12 and 30. Do Can I you remember? still do it? Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and again, perhaps? Oh, I've just had a wonderful idea. You've seen how enormous this is, and you've just seen the guest ring. When you're both married, why don't you and Kelly come and stay here? Well, it's not as 
confession you can make straight away, but I wish you'd both think about it. You don't know what it means to me to have my wonderful son living close to me and also my new, very lovely daughter-in-law. You think about it, please. What we have to try to do is get Judge Barnard to hear our, our appeal. And after all the research I've done, he's the best bet I've got, and you're not listening to one thing that I'm saying. I'm sorry. What's wrong? Well, Tori and I had another fight. We always seem to be working at cross purposes lately. Well, her behavior has been a little erratic. You noticed that too, huh? She's got her own set of problems, Mason. Yeah, I'm afraid that's true. Sorry to drag you in all this. Look, I don't think I'm going to be able to concentrate on any of this without some dinner. What about the Orient Express? Yeah, I'll call Mrs. I don't think that's a good idea. Well, if you're worried about Samantha, we can pick something up and take it over to your place. I think that you should be here when Victoria gets back from the studio. You need some time to work things out. I think we'll just manage to make things worse. I can't predict that. All I know is that if you and I have dinner together, it'll make things a lot worse than the three of us. I, I gotta tell you, I'm amazed. I mean, I asked you to let go of this and you're still hanging on to this. I asked you to drop it. I can't. Uh, look, I thought about what you said. I really did, but this plan is brilliant. It'll really work. But it's not gonna work, you see, because I'm not gonna allow it to happen. Now, you have to promise me once and for all that you will let it go. I mm -hmm. will not. You said to face reality. Well, that's what I'm doing. This is a chance for your freedom. I will not let it pass us by. From world leaders to the downfall of the Dow, from inner Mongolia to the heart of rock and roll, find out what's happening in your world. Join Maria Shriver and Boyd Matson on Sunday today.